Hi guys, it's Miss Clark over at Milam. It's good to see y'all. Something looked funny. Oh, there's a ladybug. It's bigger than me. Look how big the mushrooms are in the grass. And that apple. Oh, look how big it is. Okay, not really. I'm on a program that's making me look like I'm really small and that the grass is really tall. It's an illusion, guys. It's called space. The illusion of space makes me look really tiny because they made the grass and the flowers and the giant apple look really big. We're going to talk more about that. Stay tuned. So this is a great example of overlapping. You see how the little cat is in front and it overlaps the big, the medium cats and the medium cats overlap the big cats that are in the back. So this is a great example of overlapping in space. Or rather I should say overlapping to create the illusion of space. Here is another great example of how we create space um, with the example of size and placement. You notice that the houses that are purple and black in the front are bigger to, to resemble that they are, to show an example that they are up close and then the houses in the middle are smaller and then the houses way in the back are really small because that's showing that it's going way off into the perspective. Also using, um, spreading the houses out, making the objects higher in the picture and they appear to be distant. So this is a great example of how we use um, different things to create the illusion of space like size and placement. The last example I'm gonna show you here is the example of shading. Light and shadow create the illusion of form in space. So when you use the shading where it's black along the bottom and the side of the apple, and then it's lighter and white on the top, it creates um, the illusion of space within the piece. And also there's a shadow on the ground. So this is giving space, an example of space. Here's another example of creating space, the illusion of space, by using one point perspective. See how the objects and the shapes look like they're coming out at us? It's because it gets smaller as it all goes into the point. So this is a great example of creating space. One last example, does this look familiar? Remember when we did this, um, this was our line project, and we had a foreground which is the water, a middle ground, which is the hills, and a background, which is the mountains and the sun. So we were already creating art using space, and you didn't even know. Okay, friends, for this lesson, you're going to need a piece of paper, some crayons, and something to rub your paper with. You can use this side of your scissors, or if you're at home, you can use a spoon. I'll tell you, I'll explain this later to you. Also, I wanted to tell y'all about um, a different thing that I had called paint sticks, and I got it, got these at the Dollar General. I want to say I got all five of these for maybe three dollars, and if you have time and you want to go to the Dollar General or something and get some softer crayons like this, it's well worth your three dollars. It is, I really love these paint sticks. And if you don't have it, or if you don't have time to go, or if you don't want to, just use crayons, okay? All right, so I'm gonna use these today just because I just really love them. And, but you can use crayons, but when you use crayons, you need to press really hard, okay? And you might break your crayons, and that's okay, because broken crayons still make beautiful color. All right, with your piece of paper, I want you to fold it from the top to the bottom. Push it down and get a nice um, horizontal line in your paper. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're only going to be using from this line up for right now. I'm going to tape, tape my piece of paper down because I tend to get wild and get my paper turning. And then you can't see the paper in the video. And I forget. I even forget that I'm making a video sometimes because I get so excited about making art. Okay. We're gonna start with blue. 
right here at the crease where we folded our paper. I'm just gonna go over it with my blue. See how these um, paint sticks just smooth on like butter? Oh, I love them so much. All right, so just a little bit of blue, you guys. You know what, it may not work once these dry. Well, we're gonna try. If it doesn't work, then I'll make another video. Okay, so this is gonna be our foreground, which is gonna be our water. You can make it a little thicker if you want to. Okay, and then we're gonna make some houses right here along the edge of the river. There's no rhyme or reason to why or where I'm putting the houses or why I'm even making them red. <laughs> You're just gonna do what makes you happy. <clears throat> I'm leaving some space for some windows. I'm gonna come back and add some black for my windows and maybe leave room for a few doors. Two doors, how about that? And so, this kit of paint, of paint sticks doesn't come with um, a black. So you're gonna have to use your crayons for the, when you need to add black. So I'm gonna add black for the roof and for the windows. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of hard when, you're mark, when your crayon's thick and it doesn't come to a point and the doors. Okay, then I think I'll make another house. Maybe I'll make it yellow. I'll make it a tall, skinny house. So we're still working on our uh, foreground. Well, we'll say this is our foreground, the water part. And this is, well, this will still be part of the foreground the buildings that are right up on the water. Okay. Yours doesn't have to look just like mine. You can make a, a short building that's a different color. You can make a larger building that's a different color. This is just my design what I'm thinking about doing here. Okay, you get to use your own creativity. And I'll leave a spot for a door right there. I think we're doing a picture that um, of an Italian landscape. We're gonna give it some hills and only in Italy would they have purple and yellow buildings. <laughs> I don't know, you get to be creative, guys. When you make art, you get to make your own ideas. You can make up something totally fake, and that's what's cool about art. It's just like writing. You can write about anything. Okay, now I'm gonna give us some grass. Okay. So this is kind of starting into our middle ground. Okay. Don't have a brown. I have a gold. Let's see if it even works. Okay. So you can use a brown to create hills back here if you want, or you can keep using grass. Green for grass, no problem. Okay. Now, now I'm gonna make some more houses, but they're gonna be smaller because they're gonna be more off into the distant distance. Okay, so it's gonna seem funny that you're drawing behind these houses now that we already drew, and they're gonna be smaller, and you're not gonna have to draw the whole thing because we're showing that. These houses are behind 
the first house and we're creating space, the illusion of space, okay? It kind of looks like a face, a face house. Okay, make sure it's a little smaller. I'm gonna draw a red house over here, a smaller red house, okay? Doesn't have to be too much smaller because we haven't gone too far in the distance just yet. Okay. And a roof. I think I'll go ahead and draw some more grass. Make another hip. Uh oh, I just ruined my green. <laughs> Use one of these other greens that I have. You can also get these twistable slick sticks, uh, Crayola brand. I got them at, um, uh, oops, I should have used a different color. I got them at Michael's. I'm sure they have them at Hobby Lobby too. Um, they just go on smooth, like, but I don't want to say lipstick, but it's true. They go on. Now, if I would have had a lighter green, I would have used a lighter green. But I, maybe I'll make this darker green up here. Because you want to use darker colors up at the front. And lighter colors at the back. So if I wouldn't have broken my other green, I would have wanted this to be the lighter green. Back here. I'm going to have to try to work on that. See if I can get that green to come back to life. Okay. Now, just going with the theme here of adding a little bit of brown for another hill. It's getting farther and farther, so you're going to start drawing smaller and smaller. Okay, guys? So our next house, I need another yellow house. It's just going to be tiny. You're not even going to see the windows anymore. If you are, they're just going to be little specks. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to go dot, dot, dot for windows. And a little tiny roof. Oh boy. You can't even tell that it's a roof anymore. But that's okay. It just kind of looks like a little whatever off in the distance. Let me give you another purple house. Okay. It's so far off, you don't even need to make windows on that house. You can sing while you make art. It's good to sing. This piece would be very proud of us. Okay, I pushed the green out. So now I'm going to make the lighter green back here. Oh, yes. So you want the lightest colors or pressed lighter Back in the back, back in the distance. You can still make your land big in the distance. You just want your objects that you're drawing way off in the background to be a little tiny. And it makes it appear like it's way far away. Okay? You're doing great. I know you are. Just stick with it. Now, I think we're finished with our village. I think we can just give it, oh, I just messed that green up again. Miss Clark. Okay, I think we're gonna go for some clouds. This blue should have been darker. I may come back with a darker blue. Okay, so we don't paint clouds blue. We paint the sky blue, correct? Yes, Miss Clark, that's correct. Good job. <laughs> it's weird to make videos, guys. It's weird not being with y'all. We'll all be together soon. No worries. I can't wait till we're together again. I really miss you all. Okay. So we're drawing all of our sky. I better take off my tape here. So I can get all this sky drawn. 
Okay. Over here too. Alrighty. So now we have our landscape with our foreground, middle ground, background. Uh, let me see if I can get a color here. Make my well. If you have a darker blue, I want it to be dark blue up at the front. Oops, I have to only find. Okay. I'm going to try to make this a darker blue. Well, it's kind of showing up the same. So you notice that I'm having to press kind of hard, guys. Because for the next part of this lesson, we're going to make a print. Oh, you're going to love this part. Okay. Remember when we folded our paper. We're going to fold it back over now. All right, this is where your scissors or your spoon is coming into play. You're going to rub. Um, I'm going to use a spoon first. You're going to try to now rub everything that we just drew onto the other side of the paper to make a print. It's going to be like as if we're having a reflection into the water. Spoon's gonna work. Take a little peek. Oh, yes. You see how it's kind of reflecting? So I know that I need to do more. Okay? So I'm just gonna fold it down and rub some more. I'm rubbing really hard to get this print. If you don't have the spoon, just use the edge of your scissors. Okay? Or anything. If you have like a uh, the edge of your glue bottle. Just something that you can kind of push down with, okay? Let's take a sneaky little peek here. <gasps> How cool is this? So see, we're like making it as it, though it's reflecting into the water. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rub my water just a little harder right here. So now you know why you, I kept telling you to press so hard because you needed a lot of color to be able to um, print onto the other side. All right, guys, we made our, our art today with um, space. And then I also gave you a little added bonus by teaching you how to make a print. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to see your art, guys.